What's going on guys? This is Vonalik Puma, back with another Fallout 4 video, and today I'd like to talk about what I think is the best special stat distribution for when you start a new character. Now, as a quick disclaimer, it is worth mentioning that there are a lot of different ways you can configure your starting special stats. A big part of what you ultimately end up doing is going to be determined by what types of weapons you want to use, as well as just how far you want to play through the game. After all, you're probably going to want to allocate your starting special a little bit differently for a melee character versus a ranged weapon character, and someone who's going to want to get all 11s in their special stats will play a lot differently than someone that plans on just stopping at level 60 or whatever. With all of this in mind, I've actually put together three different special stat distributions because of this. So if you like melee builds, ranged builds, or even if you plan on playing until you get 11 in every special, we'll be going over how to do all of that here. Otherwise guys, let's just go ahead and start here by talking about all of the special stats and then work our way to what I think are some of the best starting stat allocations. So in Fallout 4, we have seven stats corresponding to each letter in the word special, with S for Strength, P for Perception, E for Endurance, C for Charisma, I for Intelligence, A for Agility, and L for Luck. Some of these stats are more important than others, with some being really good to have high allocation in early on, while most others can just be taken later on. Of all seven, I think the best special to pump early is Intelligence, as a higher Intelligence stats will increase the amount of experience points you earn for completing a given task. More specifically, each level in Intelligence improves XP gains by 3%, meaning you can get 30% more XP at 10 Intelligence versus just 3% more at 1 Intelligence. While that might not sound like a big deal as you're gaining 103% XP at 1 intelligence versus 130% at 10 intelligence, the effects of this will definitely add up over time and will allow you to gain new levels faster than you would with a lower intelligence stat. After all, performing 3 actions that normally yield 100 XP each will yield 309 XP at 1 intelligence and 390 XP at 10 intelligence. After that, the bonuses for everything else are awarded based on the level of the stat, meaning pumping your special into these areas essentially yields the same amount of bonus at both early and later levels. For example, 4 agility means you will always have about 100 action points regardless of your level, while 10 strength will pretty much always yield a carry weight of 300. Because of that, I would argue you don't really need to put as many points into these initially unless you want easier access to specific perks earlier on. After all, you can get the bonuses most of these specials provide later on anyway. Ultimately, and as far as starting special stats go, I think intelligence is the most important one, while the rest can usually be picked up or invested in more heavily later on. Since that's the case, what I would recommend is that you take into consideration what kinds of perks each individual special stat can offer you. Typically and in most cases, many of the best perks for each tree can be had within the first five ranks. For example, Strength's first five perks include Iron Fist, Big Leagues, Armorer, Blacksmith, and Heavy Gunner, while the first five in Perception include Pickpocket, Rifleman, Awareness, Locksmith, and Demolition Experts. For everyone that has played Fallout 4 extensively, you'll know that all of these are pretty great and useful perks in their own right, and most of the trees tend to be like this, though we'll go over each in a little bit more depth. Starting with Strength, I think you'll find that for the vast majority of character types and builds, you're probably not going to need any of the perks beyond either Armorer or Heavy Gunner and Strong Back. This is because pretty much all characters are going to need armor at some point, and if you do decide to use heavy weapons, you can always just allocate points to get heavy gunner. Beyond that, strong back is a good perk, steady aim is mostly just okay, and basher, rooted, and pain train are all more melee centric, so you shouldn't have to go past the first five perks in strength. The same thing goes for perception too, pickpocket is nice for thief builds, Rifleman is actually a really great perk, and is possibly the best weapon type perk in the game due to how it ignores armor. Awareness is great for revealing damage resistances and vats. Locksmith is essential for picking locks, and Demolition Expert is a great perk to boost grenades and pretty much any gun with an explosive effect or damage component. So really, I'd say you can't really go wrong with any of these first five perks. 
However, unlike Strength, it is worth noting that Concentrated Fire, Sniper, and Penetrator can all be good for ranged and rifle users. So, investing here later on could prove to be quite useful. As for Endurance, Endurance's first five perks are sort of hit or miss, with perks like Cam Resistant and Life Giver being fairly decent, while Lead Belly and Aqua Boy and Aqua Girl are significantly less so. Toughness makes more sense if you're not using power armor, but at a maximum of only 50 damage resistance, you may find you can more easily achieve that through other means or by just wearing more armor. Some of the other perks in this tree are okay, like Adamantium Skeleton, but otherwise you can probably get by without most of them. Charisma is sort of in the same boat as Endurance with Cap Collector, Lady Killer slash Black Widow, and Lone Wanderer all being great Charisma perks for the stat boosts that they provide. Beyond that, Local Leader is good for building its settlements while Party Boy and Girl will be useful for those that are using in-game alcohol-based consumables. After that, most of the other perks are based on pacification of specific creatures and enemies, which I think you can do without, while inspirational in my opinion is a good perk, but requires a lot of investment in the charisma tree in order to get it. This brings us to the intelligence tree, which honestly, I think almost every perk here is of fairly high quality, with maybe the exception of Nerd Rage and maybe Vans if you don't have the Nuka World DLC. Typically, I like to get Gun Nut, Scrapper, Science, Chemist, and Nuclear Physicist here, with Robot Expert and Medic being nice choices as well. Hacker is largely outperformed by Locksmith from Perception, but does have its occasional uses. The Agility Tree is also great, in that the first five perks are Gunslinger, Commando, Sneak, Mr. Sandman, and Action Boy or Girl. While the first four perks are more catered towards like pistol and automatic users or people that like to use stealth and no power armor, there's no denying that they are good perks. As for Action Boy, that's useful for pretty much every character and with higher agility investment, you can get perks like Ninja, Blitz, and Gun Fu, which are all phenomenal in their own right. Finally, we have the Luck Tree and sort of like Intelligence, pretty much every perk here is really good. While Idiot Savant will be a lot less useful with higher intelligence, perks like Fortune Finder, Scrounger, and Bloody Mess are all great perks. I'm sort of lukewarm on Mysterious Stranger, but it's pretty good too. Then of course you have the highly desirable Critical Banker perk, which allows you to basically store up to 4 additional critical meters, and 4 Leaf Clover, which will essentially fill a crit meter when you're normally using VATs. Even Grim Reaper Sprint and Ricochet are pretty nice perks, so it might be worth picking them up as well. Overall though, if I had to rank each special tree in terms of the number of quality perks they have for most players' setups and builds, I'd have to say Intelligence and Luck would be near the top, with Strength, Perception, and Agility being towards the middle, and Endurance and Charisma being towards the bottom. This isn't to say Endurance and Charisma are bad per se, but I think there are more perks in these trees that are less necessary in the case of specific perks like Aqua Boy and Lead Belly, or just less useful when compared to the other trees. So high investment in these stats would be more predicated on achieving the bonuses the individual stats themselves provide. And like I mentioned earlier when saying that you essentially get the same bonuses from most special stats at lower and higher levels, you may find you can get away with lower investment in these stats at the start of the game, and then eventually level them up later. Now at this point, and since we've gone over the special stats themselves and many of the perks they can provide depending on your investment in them, I think we're at a point where we can start to talk about stat point allocations. If you're someone that's fairly new to Fallout 4, or if you plan on getting all of your special stats to 11 to maximize the potential of your character, I would recommend a stat point allocation that looks a little like this, with Strength at 2, Perception at 4, Endurance at 3, Charisma at 2, Intelligence at 9, Agility at 4, and then Luck at 4. To explain my rationale here, I'm taking into account that you're going to be using Power Armor. Not only will the 9 Intelligence allow you to get Nuclear Physicist right out of the gate, which will make your fusion cores last longer, but you can also get by with having a lower strength value, as Power Armor will bring your strength special stat to 11 while you are wearing it. 
Thus, you can achieve the passive bonuses having higher strength would provide, like better melee damage and carry weights, without quite as much investment in the strength stat. Plus, if you level up strength just once from 2 to 3, that will allow you to get the armor perk, which will be the most useful perk in the strength tree for the vast majority of builds. As for our other low investment, which is in Charisma, I think it's worth considering that you really only need 11 Charisma and that you don't necessarily need 11 Charisma all of the time. At 11 Charisma, you will have a 100% chance to pass red speech checks, and provided you're wearing clothing or you take consumables that boost your Charisma, achieving 11 Charisma to pass any speech check in the game should be pretty easy. As this applies to bartering, perks like Cap Collector and specific in-game items like the Barter Bubble Head and the Junktown Vendor Magazines will allow you to get better prices for buying and selling at those lower Charisma levels. That said, maybe level up Charisma once or twice as a good cushion to make reaching 11 Charisma from outfits and chems a little bit easier, but otherwise, I think you'll find you'll be okay with 2 Charisma at the start and then maybe 3 to 6 Charisma later on, depending on what perks you want. As for our largest investment, which is in Intelligence, not only will this help you level faster, but it will more easily let you get your Intelligence to level 11 or 12 and let you get pretty much all of the best perks from the Intelligence tree of which there are many, as Nuclear Physicist, Chemist, Scrapper, Science, and Gunnut are all very useful, while Robotics Expert and Medic and even Rank 2 Advance are pretty decent. Just be sure to have a Dirty Wastelander, the Intelligence Bobblehead, and the Your Special Book for this one, as you'll need all three to hit 12 Intelligence for maximum XP gain before any step boosting gear or consumables. Otherwise, a lot of our allocation here is pretty balanced with Perception, Agility, Luck, and Endurance all being in the 3 to 4 range. 4 Perception lets you get Locksmith, which will be incredibly useful at all stages of the game, while 4 Luck will still let you get Scrouncher, Fortune Finder, and Bloody Mess, which are all great perks. By simply leveling both Agility and Endurance by 1, you can access Action Boy and Girl for Agility, which will be very useful on pretty much every character, while for Endurance allows you to get the Chem Resistant perk, which is great for using chems and has great synergy with the Chemist perk that you can get from the Intelligence tree. Between all four of these stats though, it might be a good idea to eventually level them all up with luck in particular being a high priority to get Critical Banker and so you can boost the rate you fill your critical meter a lot faster. In general, I think a fun this setup will allow you to have a decent amount of choice over what ranged weapons you want to use while ensuring you gain levels as fast as possible. However now, I would like to go over a modified version of this that can serve as a nice alternative if you don't mind using bobbleheads earlier, ensuring you won't level certain special stats beyond 10. So as you can see here, our layout is going to be fairly similar to the last setup, with the major difference revolving around the luck and intelligence stats. At 6 luck, you can acquire better criticals from the start, and with an additional level up via perk points, you will then get Critical Banker, which will be very useful for VATs. As for our Intelligence rank of 7, this will still let you get Chemist, Scrapper, Science, and Gun Nuts, and while I would also recommend you still level Intelligence up to get Nuclear Physicist for Power Armor use, 7 Intelligence will cover most of your bases. Now earlier on in this video, I recommended you level up a number of special stats with Strength, Endurance, Perception, and Agility being really good candidates due to how you can get Armorer, Chem Resistant, Demolition Expert, and Action Boy or Girl respectively. However, it's worth mentioning that if you don't care about getting these specials to 11, you can always look for the bobbleheads for each of these specials as that will free up the perk points you would normally spend to be spent elsewhere. This is especially effective with strength since you really only need 3 and could also be good for other special stats as well if you're looking to save your points and you just want the next perk up. So for example, maybe you want the Demolition Expert perk and you don't intend on going any further in Perception, so you just get the Perception Bubblehead to unlock the perk. The same thing works for the Year Special Book, which can be obtained super early on in Sanctuary. As for where to use it, it's really up to you, though I would probably recommend putting it in Perception, Agility, or Luck, since these three are the most useful for boosting your combat abilities. 
Maybe you could go into endurance if you want to boost your health, but really and again, it's up to you since I usually just use the year special book to bring a certain stat to 12. Overall though, this setup is pretty similar to the last one and focuses more on luck, which should be good for VATS users. However, now I'd like to go over what would be my melee setup. Now obviously, I would like to go ahead and spec 9 into strength initially so we can reach 12 as soon as possible. However, you may find that you're going to be better off boosting your strength to 11 with power armor to improve the damage of your melee weapons, rather than forgo special stat allocation in other areas. Plus, if you're going to be doing a melee build and use power armor, it makes sense to put a few of the points into intelligence to more easily get to 9 intelligence so you can get the nuclear physicist perk, which will allow you to stay in power armor longer by more efficiently managing your fusion core usage. The low endurance stat can make the first few areas in Concord a little more challenging for melee, but if you do manage to get power armor, you'll have a lot more resistances and you'll be able to take far more punishment from enemy attacks. If it really becomes an issue, you can always pick up the life giver perk to give yourself just a bit more health to improve your survivability. As for some of the other stat point allocations and compared to my other specs, you're getting lower perception and agility here, which is unfortunate as you'll have to level these if you want certain perks. That said, and if you don't care about maxing certain special, you could always grab the perception bobblehead near Preston and Concord to reach 4 perception and then just level up agility if you want blitz and or other perks. Eventually, you want to get your strength stats up to 12 for maximum damage, as well as gain some perks that boost melee, but early on, you should be good at just 7 strength. Plus, and as an alternative damage method, you can always spec for Heavy Gunner to use things like the Minigun and Flamer early on, while using the Fat Man, Missile Launcher, and Gatling Lasers later on. So if you're finding you're having issues dealing with enemies at a distance, doubling in heavy weapons could help you. In the end, I think you'll find this setup works fairly well and should allow you to get the most out of your melee weapons early on. Just be sure to keep an eye out for some day tripper and don't use the your special book in Sanctuary so you can reach 12 strength. At the end of the day, I think you'll find all three of these special stat allocations should work out pretty well as you can usually bypass the need for really high strength and endurance by using power armor. Charisma can be bypassed in favor of wearing certain pieces of clothing and taking chems, which, after limiting the need for high strength, should let you more easily focus on improving your other special stats. Otherwise guys, I hope this video helped you, and I think I'm gonna wrap this thing up here. If you liked this video, definitely be sure to leave a like, click the bell so you can be notified when I upload more videos, and as always, and again, thank you all so much for supporting this channel, take care, and I'll see you all in the next one.